Cancer screening can help prevent and detect a number of cancers early, which often means less intense and more successful treatment. If you don't know where you can get screened, the NFL and the American Cancer Society can help. Visit NFL.com slash crucial catch or text catch C A T C H to 635 635 to find your local cancer screening center and additional screening resources. All right, guys, time for our rookies here. We do stand out rookies each and every Monday, and I feel like I'm on repeat because I usually just grab a Jets rookie because I know some Jets rookie is going to do something big. Um, and not the first time I've gone to their running back in Brees Hall. We said a few weeks ago he's due to break out, and mm -hmm. we've seen that over the last several games now. He has become the focal point of their offense. And to me, if you, if you ask me who the best two players are on the Jets, we're going to get to their defensive line a little bit. Uh, Quinnen Williams, the best player on this team. This is the second best player right now, Brees Hall. He is ready to be a star in this league and emerge as potentially the best running back in the entire league. He's got that type of ability. He pops a little trap for a touchdown. Um, he's got bursts to get to the perimeter, as you see here. He finishes runs. He's an asset in the passing game, which we saw in Pittsburgh previously. But 160, 116 yards on the ground against the Packers. Uh, Buck, he was outstanding. He's outstanding. He's the same player that he looked like he was going to be at a Iowa State. He's just smooth and crafty. He does a good job of finding those creases, and the Jets have really given him more responsibility. And because of that, their offense is beginning to flourish. I'm going to go and stick in New York. Let's go Kayvon Thibodeau coming off the edge. He's a one-trick pony in terms of being a speed rusher, but, man, that trick is really nice. And he was able to get a strip sack to close the game out against Lamar Jackson and the Ravens. And when we think about the New York Giants and the success that they've always had traditionally throughout this franchise's history, it has been when they've been able to dominate up front with the pass rush. I now am beginning to see Big Blue come back and get all their pieces back. Kayvon Thibodeau to go with Dexter Lawrence and Leonard Williams and Aziz Ojolari. This is a dangerous team. Kayvon Thibodeau is one of those guys who has that pass rush ability to be a closer. We saw him close out the game against the Ravens on Sunday. Yeah, Dex with a sack as well uh, in this game. And, and look, I think, um, you know, we talked about it kind of, a, you know, quite a bit when we were evaluating Kayvon Thibodeau coming into the into the draft, you know, what does football mean to him? Um, you know, like where, what are the priorities? And that was one of those kind of unfortunate storylines that was surrounding him. I don't know if you, you saw him emotional yeah. walking off the field. Um, if you don't think that making an impact for this team and being an impact player, um, you know, for this franchise means something to that guy uh, after being sidelined with an injury for the first few weeks and then starting to get his legs under him again, uh, I think you're sadly mistaken. And uh, and so I think the, the Giants hit a home run there. And again, another one of those rookie classes. By the way, Wandale Robinson getting into the end zone too, providing a little extra boost um, there for that passing game that's been void of wide receiver help. Uh, I'm going to move on to another rookie here, guys. Bailey Zappi. I mean, uh, for the second straight year, a rookie quarterback has impressed us at times for the New England Patriots. Last year it was Mac Jones. This year now with Mac injured, Bailey Zappi, and I know we don't get too big on, on stats here in, in, in terms of what it means historically, but Bailey becomes the first rookie to win each of his first two career starts with a 100-plus passer rating in both games since Sonny Jurgensen in 1957. So I, I just I, I think it's been really fun to watch how comfortable he looks back there. And, and look, let's not you know let's not uh, downgrade the fact that he's playing against a, a Browns defense has some pretty dang good players over there. I know Denzel Ward didn't play and Jadavian Clowney didn't play, but Miles Garrett's still out there. Greg Newsom's still out there. I mean, like there's some guys that can make some plays defensively. And Zappy was just dealing all day long. He now has twice as many touchdowns as Mac Jones and four fewer interceptions. Is that fair, though? Is it fair to just talk about Bailey's success without mentioning the fact that the New England offense was an absolute train wreck in the po in the preseason, in training mm -hmm. camp, and through the first few weeks of this season? And one of those historical trademarks of a Belichick coach team is getting better each week. And is Zappi just a product of them figuring it out on offense, simplifying it a little bit? Uh, would Mac have had the same success? Hard to say, but Bailey's playing – at so well that Belichick, you know, when asked about the quarterback situation, was like, well, we'll just have to see how that process plays out. Wow. I, I don't know what to expect. Well, interesting. Forward. Last year, remember, remember we did rookie report cards last year, and mm -hmm. every yeah. every week, Rhett would give Mac Jones an A. Yeah. And I'm beginning to think, maybe that's just an easy class in New England. Yes. You know, maybe it's just an easy yes. class, and that's why those grades are so good. Uh, Bailey Zappi has been outstanding. All right, let's get yeah. to favorite performances of the veteran route here. I'll lead us off. Allen Robinson for the Rams. 
it was nice to see him get going a little bit and, and going back and watching all his targets, guys. I feel like he's not the, the traditional fit in the McVay system. You think about all their wideouts kind of look the same and, and kind of, you know, they're interchangeable and they're pristine route runners and in and out of breaks. To me, Allen Robinson can do some of those things, but I think he's at his best playing kind of big boy football. Mm -hmm. He gets a goal line fade. He gets a back shoulder fade, which you see right here on the screen. Using his size to post guys up, work back to the quarterback. Um, to me, they're figuring out how to use him. And I, I think that's a process when you bring in somebody, even though they're talented, um, you got to take some time to get your feet wet and figure out how do we fit him into what we do. And we have to change a little bit of what we do for Allen Robinson. I, I give him a lot of credit for being patient. I give Sean McVay credit for figuring out uh, what to do with him, Buck. It was nice to see him get going a little bit. Yeah, it was nice to see him get going. They needed him to get going because this has been too much of a Cooper Cup show. And I love Cooper Cup, but you can't just remember one guy catching all the passes in the passing game. You got to have some, some balance. You got to make the defense deal with some of the other weapons on the outside. So they finally were able to do that. I'm going to go back to Atlanta and continue to talk about the Falcons and Marcus Mariota. Yes. Marcus Mariota, like, I didn't know how this was going to work because in my mind, I'm still thinking Marcus Mariota was ultimately benched by Arthur Smith in Tennessee. Like, do they really have this connection? But Marcus Mariota has been terrific, man. He completed the first 12 passes, did a great job of just managing the game. But he has kind of leaned into the athleticism that I always felt like early in his career he was reluctant to use. 50 yards on the ground enhances an already potent rushing attack, even though they don't have – name brands in terms of at running back collectively this is a dominant rush offense number three in the league running the football marcus mariota is a nice complimented quarterback can throw it a little can run a little manages the team that's why the falcons are a big surprise this year yeah and i do want to go back and i love what love the, love what the falcons have been able to do uh to kind of figure out a way to get a couple of wins and grind out some wins for sure but i want to go back to the rams here for a second um because not just have they started to find a way to get Allen robinson uh involved dj but how about manufacturing run game they had eight different ball no. carriers eight different they had more they had just as many guys with a rushing attempt and although matthew stafford's were knees but still seven different guys with true rushing attempts like they're trying to get as creative as possible to figure out ways to move the football down the field and i, I think I, again that's that's a credit to what they do um from a staff perspective offensively as well all right i'm gonna get to my standout it was a guy who i kind of called that not necessarily called out but called out for uh, just not being what he, what he had been a year ago for his team. That was Jamar Chase with the Cincinnati Bengals. Felt like they were missing that explosive element uh, with Chase in the past game. Boy, did they find it down in the Superdome. And, well, I, I guess when your starting quarterback wears uh, the, the number one wide receiver's national championship jersey into the stadium in which they won a national title together, you better expect a pretty big game. And that was the case for Jamar Chase. While he did not have 221 receiving yards like he did in that 2019 national title game in the Superdome, he did go for 132 and two touchdowns, one of which was a 60-yard catch and run, showcasing that physicality that he has at the wide receiver spot to make guys miss, to run through tackles. He did that with Bradley Roby and Tyron Matthew uh, giving chase, and that ended up being uh, the game-winning touchdown for the Cincinnati Bengals on the road. I think for them, for the Bengals to really find their consistent rhythm offensively, you got to find a way to get the ball to Jamar Chase and let him into some of those situations where he can make guys miss and get those explosive plays down the field. Yeah, also, you still get six catches uh, from uh, from T. Higgins. You get six catches yeah. from Tyler Boyd. So, Doesn't mean uh, the other guys nice, can't nice be a part of it. Nice way spreading the ball around there. Right. Yep. No, absolutely. But he provides some of that punch with the big plays, a 60-yard reception. Um, okay, we're going to take a quick break. We're going to come back, and we're going to look at this Jets defensive line, which has emerged as one of the best in the league and absolutely obliterated the Green Bay Packers offensive line. We'll do that right after the break. <laughs> 